Today the speculators are winning. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and the Lessex Five Notice Post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. A couple of weeks ago I highlighted the fact that a good number of hedge funds were piling into commodities and particularly oil. And of course now massive amounts of funds are being traded as speculators take positions to turn a buck in the increasingly volatile finance markets. They're betting on Fed rate rises, a reduction in demand for oil, and news from Ukraine. As a result, the three main Wall Street stock indices rallied on Tuesday, a day before an expected interest rate hike by the US Federal Reserve, while oil prices dropped 7% on hopes of an end to the conflict in Ukraine. Investors are expecting the US Central Bank to raise interest rates for the first time in three years by at least 25 basis points amid surging prices. And traders will also be watching the Fed for details as to how it plans to end its bond buying program. Ahead of the Fed's meeting on Wednesday, the benchmark 10-year note eased from more than two-year highs and was around 2.15% after earlier rising to 2.169%. That's the highest since June 2019. I think the big event this week is going to be the Fed discussing what they're going to do with the portfolio and how fast they're going to move. The expectation in the short term, of course, is going to be the raising of the rate by a quarter of a percent, said Tom Plum, a portfolio manager at Plum Balance Fund in Wisconsin. On Wall Street, the benchmark S&P 500, which had slumped about 2.4% in the prior three sessions, rallied driven by technology, consumer discretionary and healthcare sectors. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 1.82% to 33,544. The S&P 500 gained 2.14% to 4,262. And the Nasdaq Composite added 2.92% to 12,948. What you're seeing is relief rallies on a bear market. There's hopes and expectations that something will start resolving in Ukraine, Plum added. European stocks, which had been rebounding in recent sessions, dipped after China reported a jump in coronavirus cases and new restrictions. The ongoing war in Ukraine also weighed on European shares despite continuing ceasefire talks and some positive signs of a breakthrough. The pan-European stock 600 index lost 0.28%, and the MSCI gauge of stocks across the globe gained 0.94%. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan closed 2.73% lower overnight. And oil prices tumbled more than 7% to their lowest in almost three weeks on Tuesday, as supply disruption fears eased on Ukraine peace hopes and surging COVID-19 cases in China, spurring demand concerns. In fact, US and global benchmark crude oil officially entered a bear market on Tuesday, just five trading days after they settled at their highest prices since 2008. A bear market is technically usually marked by a drop of 20% or more from a recent high. The collapse has been spectacular, Farad Rexada, a market analyst at Think Markets said in a market update. On Tuesday, the front month April West Texas Intermediary crude futures contract was down 7.6%, and it's down more than 23% from the March 8th settlement of $123.70, which, by the way, was the highest finish since the 1st of August 2008. And Brent crude was also down more than 23% from the March 8th settlement of $127.98, which was the highest finish since July the 22nd, 2008. That was the quickest decline for WTI from a recent high into bear market territory since April 2020, when prices took only one day to fall into a bear market. And for Brent, that marked the quickest fall into a bear market since 1996, when it took five trading days to enter a bear market. The biggest driver behind the sell-off 
in the oil has been investor realisation that Europe is not going to wean off Russian oil supply immediately. Everything else is secondary, including the potential return of Iranian oil supply. Iran and world powers have been trying to negotiate a deal to revive the 2015 nuclear deal, which was aimed at limiting Iran's nuclear activities. And the deal would also likely lift some US sanctions on Iran, allowing it to contribute more oil to the world market. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov told his Iranian counterpart on Tuesday that negotiations on reviving the deal were nearing an end. Meanwhile, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries has highlighted the risk to the oil demand outlook arising from the Ukraine war and surging inflation. In its monthly report, released on Tuesday, the group of major oil producers said it was leaving its economic forecasts and its estimates of 2022 crude oil demand and supply growth under assessment. And it warned that inflation stoked by the Russian-Ukraine war could undercut oil consumption. Also weighing on oil prices is something that had sent prices into negative territory last year, surging COVID cases and lockdowns, this time in China, the biggest oil importer in the world. China's southeastern manufacturing hub of Shizan, near Hong Kong, has been locked down due to a COVID outbreak, in addition to a COVID lockdown in the northeast of the country. For now, however, Russia's continued invasion of Ukraine is likely to cause more disruption to global trade, if not to energy exports directly. Marshall Staves, energy market analyst at SME Global Commodity Insights, said. So, upside risk remains, and the current retrenchment in prices appears to be profit-taking, motivated by the Chinese demand concerns, he said. Given the sharp sell-off in oil prices, the oil markets may see a bit of bargain hunting at these levels, especially as the threat of Russian supply disruptions does remain high. Still, we need to see evidence of a rebound first, ideally on a daily closing basis before bullish speculators start to dip their toes in. And elsewhere, the US dollar lost value to the euro and other major currencies after those oil prices fell and ahead of the Fed's expected rate hike. The dollar index fell just a tad, with the euro up 0.04% to 1.0943. Meantime, safe haven gold fell nearly more than 1% to a two-week low. Spot gold dropped 1.8% to $1,915 an ounce, while US gold futures fell 1.55% to $1,928 an ounce. And the point I want to make is there are many people making big amounts of money on one side of the trade and losing large amounts of money on the other side of the trade in these volatile markets. Expect more of this ahead, and I still expect to see more falls ahead, as well as some significant rebounds. This is going to be choppy for a long, long time, but don't assume that this is the end of the falls in the markets. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.